Fallout 76. We all know the game had a, a little bit of a rough launch, but over the last year, Bethesda has been patching and releasing expansions for the game, slowly improving it, up until last week, when Bethesda decided to just take it out back and put a bullet in it. Sleep well, sweet prince. It almost looked like there was a glimpse of hope for Fallout 76 at one point, and maybe even a bit for Bethesda's public image too, which they could really do with right now. But I think it's pretty fair to say that that point has passed. It's now been around a year since the 76th Fallout released and immediately rained down hellfire upon every poor soul that bought the game. A quick refresher for those struggling to remember. Bethesda revealed the game at E3 2018, with Todd Howard himself on stage. He boasted an online fallout that he was suggesting 1. wouldn't be an overall, horrifically dreadful experience to play, and 2. had 16 times the detail of Fallout 4. Neither of these were true. 16 times the detail. It turned out to be an online Fallout 4 without any human NPCs. But there were dragons. Fallout 76 came out five months later on the 14th of November. It turned out that the game's development was handed to a newer, relatively inexperienced Bethesda team in Austin, with the main Bethesda Maryland designing and overlooking the development of the game. During this development, Bethesda forgot what bug testing was and ended up deciding to just, just leave it all in there. Game breaking bugs? Sure. Bugs from previous games? Throw it in. Also, let's make it so the server crashes when more than one nuke goes off. That'll be fun. Character models looked a bit off. People lost their accounts with dozens of hours of playtime. Others turned into whatever this is. The movement speed matched the frame rate of the game, so having higher frame rates would cause you to turn into an Olympic gold medalist. Some people's PCs were just straight up bricked. Things were not smooth. When the game was playable, it had no human NPCs to interact with, only other players. Bethesda had half their team working on the detail. 16 times the detail. So developing actual things to do and interactable NPCs was unfortunately not possible. But it's all right, gentlemen. Other players will take the place of NPCs. Todd Howard reassured us. For some quick research into how this usually pans out, see the game Rust. Jimmy, kill Jimmy! Kill Jimmy! He's killed what, everybody! What, what, what? Get Jimmy! Jimmy. Eventually, they did fix a lot of the bugs using gargantuan patches twice the size of your operating system, but these haunting events will stay in the minds of those affected for years to come. Because Bethesda's mod marketplace for Fallout 4 and Skyrim, the Creation Club, was so well received, they decided to create another in-game market exclusive to Fallout 76, the Atomic Shop. This was a cosmetic-only in-game marketplace where you could buy such luxuries as a set of power armor with some paint slapped on for only $20. I'll take seven, please. Do you like $6 fridges? Do you like the outfits you got for free in the last game we made? Great, come in and spend some money. Bethesda defended the Atomic Shop with the following arguments. You can earn atoms in-game, the purchases would fund the upcoming free expansions for the game, and most convincing of all, the Atomic Shop would stay cosmetic-only, so the PvP was fair and unaffected. We'll revisit these promises later. As you can imagine, a lot of people started refunding the game. Rumours spread that you could refund the game after two hours of playtime on PC, so even more people tried refunding the game. When Bethesda caught wind of the ungodly amount of people trying to refund the game, they ended up just saying no. This was made possible due to the fact that, on PC, the game sold exclusively on Bethesda's own launcher, so no silly refund policy involved. Then came murmurs of a class action lawsuit against Bethesda because of the game's broken state, as well as the flat-out refusal to refund players. And not much has happened since. When advertising the collector's edition of Fallout 76, Bethesda made sure to include a photo of a canvas bag. This item was also labelled canvas bag, so people were pretty convinced it was a canvas bag. However, when the game was released, what they received was not a canvas bag. Fans excitedly opened their collector's editions, expected to be greeted by a bag made of delicate canvas, but instead found one made of cheap nylon, something more akin to a Tesco's carrier bag than the luxurious canvas duffel that was promised. Naturally, people complained, and Bethesda's helpful customer service department responded by politely telling everyone to fuck off. That didn't work so well, so they then blamed it on a shortage of canvas. The luscious commodity was apparently too rare and expensive for Bethesda to get a hold of, even though at E3 they had handed out canvas bags to influencers. Their argument was convincing, but people weren't biting. Todd had to give in. They started off by giving everyone 500 atoms. This was the in-game equivalent of one and a third emotes. Surprisingly, this $5 payout to people who had fished out $300 to buy a Power Armor edition and expected their duffel bag to be made of prestige canvas was not a satisfying response to most, so Todd gave in again. 
Bethesda now promised to send everyone who could prove that they purchased the collector's edition an actual real canvas bag. All you had to do was send your receipt and type out your address and full name on the Bethesda support page and your bag would arrive in four to six months. Speedy. What Bethesda didn't realize was that their support page wasn't actually secure and all of your personal information was now out there for the world to see. Some random accounts on Bethesda.net were even getting sent these support tickets, including all the personal information of the senders. Not knowing what to do, Bethesda just said f*** this and shut down the site. Someone at Bethesda thought it would be a good idea to create a real-life version of Fallout Nuka-Cola Dark Rum. It didn't turn out to be a good idea. The product sold at a mere $80 and was supposed to be delivered on November the 14th alongside the game. It didn't. Customers were confused. Bethesda announced that there would be a slight delay and that customers should keep an eye out for updates. Those who didn't cancel their orders there and then received the rum more than a month later on the 20th of December. The rum ended up tasting awful and the bottle was completely fucked. Now this one isn't solely Bethesda's fault, but it is one of the many incredible cock-ups related to the game. After all of the above had blown over, the game would sink into the depths of obscurity. But the collector's edition wasn't finished. It would spring up one more time in the media. This time it was the helmets. They were accumulating dangerous levels of mold. The mold only amassed inside the collectible Nuka-Cola helmets, of which 20,000 were made, 32 sold through GameStop. They were said to be gathering extremely high levels of mold, so much so that the United States Consumer Product Safety Commission considered them to be a severe health risk for anyone with one in the household. They were recalled and refunded. And all of that amounted to what was probably the most catastrophic launch of a video game ever. As you can imagine, Todd Howard has since gone into hiding and possibly the witness protection program. Bethesda's reputation was slipping before the events of 76 anyway, mainly due to the decline of their game's quality, the infinite porting of Skyrim, the attempt to sell mods to players, some of them already free on the Nexus, twice, and so on. But Fallout 76 was a major tipping point. Gamers were angry. They were rising up. So furious, these angry gamers even made numerous angry YouTube videos and forum posts, most of which attained a lot of upvotes from other angry gamers. Things were getting serious. Bethesda thought it best not to respond to the complete calamity that was the launch of this game and return to the shadows. Before launch, you could often find Pete Hines, vice president of Bethesda Softworks and head of marketing and PR on Twitter, answering curious fans' questions about the game. Afterwards, nothing. Complete radio silence. Pete. Eventually, Bethesda's Reddit community managers started to become a bit more transparent on the Fallout 76 subreddit, and after the rough few first patches, the game slowly started to become a bit better. One of the main things that players wanted fixing was the severe weight limit of their stash, which is essentially their in-game bank to hold the stuff they can't carry. For a game that revolves around looting and hoarding, the small weight limit wasn't a very intelligent design decision. Bethesda ended up raising it by 200 points in one of the early patches, but then they said they couldn't raise it anymore because it brought up server performance problems. Problems. Hmm. After a month or two of smoothing the Fallout 76 experience, they released a roadmap for the upcoming expansions, and they actually looked like they were making an effort to improve the game. But not that Battle Royale one. No one asked for that. Yeah, we put a Battle Royale in Fallout 76. It did actually look like they genuinely planned on sticking with Fallout 76 and updating it over the years so that someday it could have a shot at redemption, similar to No Man's Sky. In June, they released a trailer for an expansion set to come out at the end of the year called Wastelanders. The trailer showed real human NPCs, complete with actual dialogue choices. <gasps> they listened. Were we actually in for something that somewhat resembled a Fallout game? For the optimistic, it may have suggested that Bethesda had in fact began to change. Their trail of greed, incompetence, and outright refusal to listen to what their fanbase wanted was just a brief nightmare. A small bump in the road, finished. Unfortunately, Todd had other plans. Todd, it finally looks like we're on the verge of getting a trace of respect back from our fans with this Wastelanders update, should we add more staff to its development team? Delay it until 2020. In the meantime add a monthly subscription service. Call it Fallout first. That sounds nice. Rolls off the tongue well. Make it $13 a month and make the primary feature the ability to create private worlds, something our players have been dying for and we promised we'd be adding to the game in the future update anyway, for free. But Todd, we promised that the game's microtransactions would be cosmetic only. $13. A month.
for what we can only assume was due to the awful sales figures and the lower than expected purchasing of atoms, Bethesda decided to take the nuclear option, something so unimaginable that dedicated players just flat out uninstalled the game. They decided to do this on the same date that the bombs dropped in the Fallout universe, just to make it that much more genuine. Fallout 76 was trending on Twitter again, numerous angry reddit posts were cropping up, oh boy, a monthly subscription for a game I already had to pay for. What's included for these Fallout first members? Well, they were in for private worlds, and in limited weight stash, something they said wasn't possible due to server performance. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Some free atoms and a few emotes. Ooh, I like that one. All for the measly price of $13 a month or an even cheaper $100 a year. Bethesda had already broken their cosmetic only promise a while back when they added special repair kits to their atomic shop, but this was taking it a whole step further. And in classic Bethesda fashion, for the two people that actually bought the Fallout First subscription, none of the features worked as intended. It just works. First of all, they forgot to buy the Fallout First domain name and someone on 4chan managed to get there first. Fallout f*** you first. A lovely advertisement for Bethesda's newest product. Private servers turned out to use recycled multiplayer worlds that had evidence of recent activity from other players, such as dead enemies, looted areas, and so on. The infinite stash was gobbling up people's trash, which they could no longer find. So there was that. And yeah, once again, things were not smooth. This premium service is also very interestingly priced. The monthly subscription is as much as Netflix and Amazon Prime, and more expensive than Spotify, the Xbox Games Pass, and Hulu Premium. Hmm, yeah, I'm gonna have to pass on that one. With a never-ending array of these spectacular cock-ups, I think being wary of the state of Starfield in the next Elder Scrolls is a justifiable state of mind, and I'm sure a good number of you who purchased Fallout 76, either at launch or on sale, might regret ever buying the game. But I just want you guys to know that it wasn't your fault. You never had a choice. They showed you the adverts, they tried selling it to you, but of course, being a person of integrity, dignity and critical thinking, you said you weren't going to buy it. The lies weren't going to work this time. But then... You locked eyes with him. He then whispered something in your ear about being four times the size. How could you resist? Todd had won again, and he'll keep on winning, because Todd knows how to sell a game, whether or not it's the same game that comes out at launch. I know from where you're sitting it probably looks like an 18 canvas run of bad luck, but the truth is, Todd had won from the start.